On the breakfast, floods are ravaging different parts of Nigeria, including Kogi State with Lokoja Highway affected. We'll discuss the situation and the way forward with an expert. Also on the breakfast, we'll discuss women's football looking at the female national teams, uh, the Super Falcons and the Flamingos. And as always, we'll also be taking an in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. We call it Off the Press. It's a beautiful Friday morning. Thank you for joining us. And as always, a lot of persons will say, thank God it's Friday. Uh, it's good to be back on your screen. And it's also good to know that you're here with us this morning. It's going to be an amazing conversation as always. I mean, from now until the hour of nine o'clock. Not exactly, but just before nine, we'll call it a wrap. So yes, we'll have a lineup of conversations that would interest you. But always we start with issues that are making the rounds. I mean, issues that you have people talking about. And on the front burner, we have ASU, uh, you know, planning to sue the federal government over registration of factional academic unions, union. Uh, the Academic Staff Union of University, called ASU, has approached the National Industrial Court over the federal government's registration of two uh, factional union, or unions, if you want to say, ASU is going to court and is saying that, first of all, they are going to have the very popular and uh, famous lawyer, Femi Falanor, uh, on their side. Uh, if you follow very well, on Tuesday, the federal government had registered two factional academic unions, the Congress of the Nigerian University Acade Academics and the National Association of Medical and Dental Academics. Uh, the registration of these two uh, factional unions took place as talks between ASU and the government broke down and meet, you know, uh, a period of time where they went on strike, seven months of strike by lecturers of public universities. However, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, had explained that two bodies will exist alongside the ASU, adding that the two associations will enjoy the rights and privileges accorded to other academic unions in the tertiary educational system. Now, this is one thing that has uh, gotten a lot of people talking. Uh, it's generated various, I mean, and different reactions, and uh, that's been going on for a very long time. But so really, some persons have said, is this really, you know, uh, a very brilliant move by the federal government? I mean, is this something that you can uh, write home about? This move by the federal government, uh, the fact that you have an agreement that was met at the time, agreement that has not been implemented, 2009, you're talking about uh, 2022 here, and then there's a creation of a faction does it even really make any sense? What's going to happen? So this union that has been created now, are they also going to be void of the problems that ASU is faced with? Because these are lecturers, and so it's more like a duplication of channel for you know reactions, and that's what a lot of persons think that this is not you know very smart move and the way. But does it also mean that, you know, the lectures would actually be called off? I mean, students will get, get back to the classrooms and lecturers. So now that you have lecturers that belong to ASU and you have lecturers that belong to another union, uh, will there be some uniformity in terms of resumption and what have you? But it is what it is. ASU has said that uh, they're suing the federal government to go into an industrial court, approaching it, and they have a lawyer already, a very prominent one uh, at that. But let's see if the odds will be for them or against them what becomes of them. But at the end of the day, there's, you know, local phrase or, I mean, a, a phrase, a parable, if you like to say. They say when you have two elephants fighting, the grass will suffer. In this context, you know who the grass is. <laughs> well, let's move away from that. Another one that's uh, getting people talking and, and having a lot of reaction is that uh, the police have actually knocked an oddly carrying Atiku's wife's handbag. <laughs> So this is not new. 
who have complained about the number of police officers. So there's, there's a picture that I saw yesterday, and you have a lot of people who are very, very um, on the spot, especially when they're on the social media. There's a lot of investigative personnel. You can see that. That's the wife of uh, the former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And uh, you can see her right there. That's, that's her orderly. And then, or oh, police officer, really. She has the bag. And whose bag would it be? Would it be her bag? Because usually it's suspected that you travel light. I mean, you're, you're there to be ready for any kind of attack. But it's what's the police, I mean, so this is no longer news because this is something that's been going on for a very long time. And until we understand, until we place premium on uh, the security personnel that we have in our country, then I'm not sure that it will be different. So it's just a state. It shows uh, the premium. It shows, you know, our thoughts. It shows where we place our police officers and uh, those people who are responsible for ensuring that lives and properties are protected. So it's a lot, and it's really saddening, really, uh, that you have. So what stops you from having, you know, someone else who carries your bag, more like a personal assistant or something, which you have uh, a security personnel? That's a police officer. So what happens if there's an attack right now? Will she be combat ready? That's the point. Let's imagine that you have, a, you have a, someone somewhere who's about to take a shot at you. Don't you think that her hands are too busy already for her to defend you? What's the essence? How did we even get to this point? Because the complaint, of, compli complaint over time has been that um, we do not have enough personnel. We don't have enough police officers to police the entire country. If you look at the number of police officers, yes, we know that recently the government had talked about employing about 10,000. And the president made that very known, especially in his speech, talking about progress. But... If, you're, if we're talking about 211 million persons in Nigeria, approximately, that's, you know, statistics from the United Nations, right? So uh, do we even have up to 100 million police officers policing this population? Now we have an issue where we have the same police officers policing a, a group of persons in the society, the elites. And at the end of the day... Uh, it doesn't even end at that. They're not even being respected. So we see a lot of, I mean, something has been going on for a long time. But until we actually put our foot down and we're ready uh, to ensure that we have uh, a different outcome, a different result, this will definitely continue. It's just a reflection of what we think about the security personnel in the country, from the military, the Air Force, the police. It's, it's, it's really embarrassing. And the big question for me is where lies Please, professionalism. Because we contribute to making nonsense of our security personnel. It doesn't even add up. So I want to even understand, why would you hire a police officer? Why would you ask a police officer to be your, an orderly for you? Is it that you should carry your bags around and wash your clothes and all of that? Was it not for you know, security and safety purposes? And if there's a security threat where you are, would she be able to you know, swing into action? We hope that we get answers from all of that. I mean, I don't have to say anything, but I'm sure you understand what the answer will be already. Another is that uh, it broke the internet yesterday. So now let's not forget that the uh, flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress, uh, Shiwaju Bola Matunubu, has been on the news for, for a very long time. I mean, consistently, there's been a lot of talk around him. First of all, his non-availability during the time where the campaigns have been flagged off uh, lack of his presence around and all of that has gotten people talking. But surprisingly, it's the fact that peach, pictures actually made it to the round from the pictures where we saw him, you know, on a cycling uh, machine, you know, exercising. So the fact that pictures yesterday were shared of him playing with his grandchildren, and you can see all of that. Uh, but this is not it. There's someone who's actually spoken about that because when it gets to the period of election, it feels like everyone should brace themselves up. We see different actions. We see different pictures. You, so you find politicians on the road interacting with, you know, children or maybe playing with their children. There's also a picture of the president, the current president, playing with his grandchildren. <laughs> so this is also another one. You also find pictures of politicians who are eating maybe on the roadside, visiting the market and playing with the less privileged or some persons in the society. And this is supposed to do what? Send a certain message and at the end of the day, 
the election, winning the election is just a priority. But what happens to the genuine interests of the people? Now, this is this are some of um, you know the things that we see politicians engage with. So it, wa it wasn't really different and surprising for a lot of Nigerians, but the reactions have been different. And you have some people are saying, hey, this is not that time where you know pictures would actually come up online and Nigerians would be deceived and you know act differently. <laughs> but I think we need to do better. It's a Friday morning. We'll take a break now. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of a national dailies. We call it off the press. Please stay with us.